Hello gamers, welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing another VOD review yet again, this time on SKT Teddy's Kaisa, Kaisa, sorry I always say that wrong. Yes, SD, SKT Teddy's Kaisa. So yeah, he's yet another pro, obviously playing in Europe right now, because of Worlds being in Europe. And obviously it wouldn't be a challenger game without the level 1 Fiesta, I guess. I literally cannot remember the last time I watched a challenger game when this didn't happen. I just don't understand it. Alright, let's see how this goes. So far even for both teams. And Teddy gets a kill. Feels good. Oh, he's gonna... F oh. Oh no. Oh, he doesn't realize just how close he was to getting that Caitlyn, but yeah, I guess they don't know where she is, so he doesn't want to risk wasting his time when she might have already backed or found a spot where they're not going to find her, and so he just wants to back and get, spend his gold. Fair enough. Gets a long sword. No. No, sorry, that's a dagger. Sorry, I'm really powered. I've been procrastinating doing this vlog review. Oh, I can't speak. This vlog review for like four hours. It's like 4 a.m. right now, so... <laughs> My brain is a bit malfunctioning right now. What the hell is going on here? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Alright, done arts, I see. That explains that. Alright, so, yeah, alright. Blaine is finally started. So, matchup is Kaisa into Caitlyn for matchup. Gregus into Morgana. I'm trying to think about who actually has the advantage here. I mean, usually you would say Caitlyn beats Kaisa, but. I feel like Gregus is probably a pretty strong early game support, but not probably not so much into Morgana because of the spell shield. She should be countering champions like him. So I'm going to go ahead and say this matchup should be favored towards the Caitlyn. So we'll see how Teddy manages to get through this lane. So far, so good, though. They did manage to get the push onto them. Dragus gets some harass off. So far, Teddy dodged all the bindings. Or Morgana missed. Picky poison. Also has a CS lead. It should have got into lane at about, at about the same time, right? So I think this is just off of Teddy out CSing so far. Mm, that should be a bad trade on to Teddy. I can't really see Kaelin's HP though, it's kind of awkward. Overall, he's in a good spot, though. Just running a bit low on mana is the only issue. But he's got enough. And he is on point with those dodges onto the bindings. Gragas. Oof. Okay. Both supports very nearly die there. But not quite a kill on either side. Gragas just barely doesn't die again. Kind of pushing his luck there. And Teddy just accidentally hit his W on a minion. Otherwise, he probably could have flashed out the kill in there to kill her. And he can still do it. Oh, I, I, he just leveled up. And it gave him a Z. He's actually so lucky that he didn't die there. Yeah, I, even, look at his XP bar too. Like, it was so close. I don't think he had that planned out. I think he's just lucky that he happened to get a return kill. Uh, or that, rather, that he managed to survive. But either way, that should have been that would have been favored towards him either way, even if he died, because the way the the way the wave is positioned, Caitlyn was gonna miss a ton of CS under tower if she died, whereas Teddy had already shoved in the wave, so he wasn't really gonna miss m too much, at least compared to Caitlyn. So then the fact that he manages to survive, I mean, that's just the cherry on top. Would have been fine either way though. Yeah, I guess meanwhile. I guess went the gank mid. 
Not much point in like you saw that he recalled a lot earlier than Teddy because he was like you know five HP. There was nothing left left for him to do. So when he's walking back into lane and Teddy is just recalling because now he has to recall. There's not much for Gragas to do on the lane one v two. So that's just the perfect moment to roam. There's no reason not to in that situation. Even the weakest roamers will still just take that opportunity to roam and see if it leads to anything. I'm happy to see that I'm not the only one that tunnels on trying to hit W's on champions and accidentally hit minions. That happens to me all the time on, like, Kai'Sa and Jinx. Feels a bit embarrassing, but I guess it's pretty common. So he's built to be upside. He's also good at dagger. I'm guessing that means he's probably going to be going for Storm Razor. Usually people go Mana Moon on Kesa these days, but Storm Razor is also fine. Ooh, Gragas kind of gets caught there. Caitlyn really messed up with her traps, though. She, pl she, she placed two. She had two chances to get it right. Not a single trap actually landed on him, which is pretty stupid because... Ooh, close dodge there. Caitlyn Morgana is actually such a brutal combo because if Morgana just ever lands a binding, Caitlyn places a trap under them and they just get CC'd for so long and get burst really hard. It can easily lead to a kill with just one binding, but you have to actually aim the traps like properly. It's not that hard. They're not moving. They can't dodge. It should not really be missable on the Caitlyn's side, but she didn't miss them this time. <clears throat> I'm beginning to think maybe I just underestimated the Gragas pick. It does seem to be doing a lot better into the Morgana than I expected. So Teddy's winning lane, I'm sure. Ooh, close one. I'm sure part of it is just, you know, obviously he's going to be a better player than this than this Caitlyn, obviously. But, like, I haven't seen too much. Like, I don't think that's been, like, the main influence behind his lead in lane so far. He just seems to have had the natural advantage for most of this time. Rampage. Him and Gragas together. Just using his for some wave player there. I actually place the ward here. I wish I was smart enough to figure out why. Like I'm sure, I'm sure there's an obvious reason. I just can't quite think of it right now. Shut down. Maybe I'm just overthinking it, and it was a misclick. If anybody has any idea, please just let me know in the comments. So at least I'll have it figured out for next time. I know people do that on mid lane to show when, if the enemy wants to roam, but I don't see it being too useful in bot lane in that spot. That's so they get a kill on Olaf. Ooh, aggressive flash, but he's got the Storm Razor for the slow, so actually forces Morgana's flash and he's got the ult to keep chasing. Oof. And they almost finish her off? Do they finish? Yeah, okay, perfect. Yeah, I, I, th I thought that looked kind of weird, but then I noticed the Storm Razor is slow. Then it made sense. So he's actually got that really early Storm Razor. He's actually super fed right now. 
about as solid as a start as you can hope for. Wally Bros also got five kills somehow. He's actually got one kill participation per minute. Don't know how much of that was in the level one though. Anyway, they just get a notion. That's actually beautiful. Definitely the best early game dragon. Always happy to see that. Uh, Morgana just sent it away there. <laughs> she wanted to freeze the wave. She didn't... I, I assume she thought Dragus wasn't in the lane. I mean, he wasn't, but he was close, obviously. Even so, I think Teddy on his own would have been good enough reason not to try and freeze that. It's smart to freeze when you can, but, I mean, don't tunnel on it. It's not always worth the risk. Trunia tries to get the gank off, gets caught. That is just chilling. Got his pickaxe, that probably means... Yeah, he's just upgraded his Q right now. Also got the Berserkers. Um, how much does he need for his Evolve? It's around two daggers and then like one more level up or something like that. So he's really strong right now. Trying to get the auto attack onto Caitlyn, but he doesn't have his Storm as a charge, so it doesn't slow her. He'd already used it on minions. So that's always something you gotta remember when you're playing Storm as Kaisa, and when you're playing against her, because I mean, that's slow, you, it's easy to forget about it, because you're not used to ha like an ADC like Kaisa having a slow on her kit, because it's not on her spells. But you can get really caught off guard by that, and, and if you're the one playing Kaisa, then you can catch your enemies off guard with that if you just. Save it for a good moment. And try not to waste it on minions if you feel an opportunity to catch them off guard might arise. So far, I think every Dragasol has been either spell shielded or flashed. Or stopwatched. Mm -hmm. So Teddy decides to farm there while his team is fighting. Is he gonna clean up now though? He's trying. Shen shows up, so. That's help from Shen. They do manage to get a kill back onto Morgana. Yeah, I don't think that was too smart a fight of Teddy's team to take anyway. I think he thought the same thing, so he decided to <laughs> not risk it and not decide to help until it looked free. Ooh, ulting very aggressively onto the Caitlyn, dodges the traps. He's gonna take the Caitlyn ult, but that won't kill him. So she had to flash for that. Oh, wow, that's not smart. I was gonna say, she she survived, but she had to flash to survive, but then she just walks back in and dies, so. She just flashes for nothing in the end. But Katarina does get the return call onto, <laughs> onto Teddy. It's kind of hard to react to that as an ADC when you're getting jumped on by Katarina like that. She, you just, she enters your vision and she's already dashed onto a minion and queued you and there's nothing you can do to escape that. As soon as the moment she enters your screen, you're just like, oh, I'm dead. Not much Teddy could do there. Def definitely could have avoided overstaying. It was a bit greedy to go for those, for those minions, but... I mean, we all agreed. I would have done the same thing, let's be real. We all hope we can get away with it. By going on top lane, seems like the enemy bot lane know that Teddy and Gragas are going to want to lane swap top lane, so they just lane swap in advance to be able to match that and not lose this free top lane tower. Pretty standard stuff at this elo. So he takes one raptor, I think, for some reason. This is a full lethality sound, by the way. So if that had hit Teddy, he would have been dead. 
Yeah, the Boss FFS is actually a full lethality sound main on the US server. I was just thinking, when I when I see this sound player in these challenger games, I always know just by looking at his name that he's building full lethality. It just occurred to me. Teddy does not know this player. He's not from European Solo Queue. He might, may, at this point in time, he may not have even noticed this, this Sion is just building full damage. But either way, he dodges it, so it doesn't really matter. So one for one trade there. Uh, what the hell just happened there? Grab his ulcer. Yeah, I guess he did. Killin still manages to escape though. Nope. Actually she does end up dying. That he manages to bully Kata Katarina away from his lane. Uh there's the Scion Yomus. It doesn't quite manage to get the Kalanta case, so it doesn't get the knock up. But now he has no Yomus, so despite being in a kinda risky situation against the Scion, he now feels confident enough to just walk up and harass him. Now he's just gonna go back. I'm assuming at this point he's probably gonna have enough gold for Ginsu's. Yeah, for sure. He's got the Amp Tome, so it's pretty much guaranteed. So if he didn't already have his Z upgrade, he definitely has it now. I think he already had it anyway. Yeah, he did. And now he's got the Stinger. So he's heading towards that Nash's Tooth for the AP build. Makes sense since his TF is going AD, so. Definitely doesn't hurt. Forces the enemies to have to split their build between armor and MR rather than just full armor. Okay, so Volley Bear just picks up the dragon there, Mountain Drake, while. Olaf is on the top side ganking Shen, so they're gonna try and get a tower on the top lane. Eddie, uh, Teddy just gets caught by the Katarina there. Unfortunate. Hmm. I don't think they're nah. They're not gonna be able to get this tower. Fortunately, Gragas dies, but he does end up taking the Olaf down with him, and in the process manages to save that top lane tower. Now we're just gonna wait for Teddy to revive. Oh, he actually, he just sold his uh, his Amp Tome that he had in his inventory and just, or I don't know if he sold it, maybe he refunded it, but either way, he decided he would rather go for the Null Magic Mantle for some MR. So I'm guessing he's uh, not too thrilled about the way he just died to Katarina. It's never fun dying to Katarina as an ADC. There's not really a whole lot you can do about it. You'd think your daggers are easy to dodge and then you'd be able to win it, but you, you'd be able to win or at least survive, but no. It's kind of hard to dodge anything. And even if you do, you still die anyway, so. Goes for the Amar to reduce the chances of that happening. I'm assuming. It'll. Actually, there's a lot of things he could build this into. He could go into Wit's End. He could go Hex Drinker. He could also. Uh, save it for later towards uh, Banshee's Veil. I'm not sure. I feel like the Banshees would be less likely. Because he has to sit on a lot of gold to actually build. To actually upgrade that. Since I'm assuming it'll be going Nash's Tooth first. Engages onto Gragas there. Gragas has failed the ult. Katarina blows her burst onto somebody who isn't Teddy, so good opportunity for Teddy to, to do some damage there. Doesn't quite manage to get any kills, but he does chunk out the Ola.
Notice, by the way, that he's 7 TCS above the Caitlyn. He's doing really well. Very much outperforming his lane opponent this game, both in and out of lane. Just take note of uh, all these moments. I should have been pointing pointing them out, sorry, but just look at all these moments where they don't really have too much vision of the enemies and he's alone. But he still feels confident to farm mid lane on his own because even if they don't have vision, even if he doesn't know exactly where the enemies are, he still has a good idea of when it's safe to farm and when it isn't, even if the map is pretty dark. So that's a big part of why he's able to maintain such high CS. A lot of players struggle to either... Like, they'll either think that it's not safe to farm. Ooh, nearly gets caught there. Actually, he manages to get a kill onto Morgana, gets the kill onto Caitlyn too. Very well played. Does start off with him getting picked, but he manages to turn that around beautifully. He might be able to get the Olaf here too. Olaf is pretty low. He's gonna try and turn on that. Ooh. Uh, he didn't quite execute that properly and... Did Cody have to flash for that? No, she actually just eat through the wall. That's unfortunate, Teddy. But yeah, about the CSing. So, a lot of players will either try to farm when it's not safe and they die a lot and that cuts their CS down. And other times, they'll play it too safe and... Or rather, they just don't know when it's safe to farm. So they just pass up on a lot of free opportunities and that also cuts down on their farm. So to maintain high CS like Teddy, in a game like this, it's just about not playing it, not playing it like safe, but also not being greedy for farm too. Just maximizing all the CS opportunities available to you, taking advantage of every single one. So he does manage to complete that Nash's tooth on that back, which is a pretty huge cross spike. It'll be interesting, interesting to see what he builds that no magic mantle into. Alright, by the way, I actually made a mistake earlier. He's actually still got the Doran's Blade that he can sell, so he doesn't actually have to sit on that no magic mantle for long if he doesn't want to. He can just sell that for another component later on. Goes aggressive onto the Olaf. He has his ult, I believe, so yeah, that's actually pretty safe. I don't think there was much Olaf could do either way though, since Gragas was coming from the other, from the other side. He couldn't really escape the case the Kaisa, so. <laughs> okay, so there are some things going on to the dragon there some things going on to the baron um i do feel it's a good opportunity to go for that baron relatively since the olaf is dead but it's not entirely free there is a chance they could lose the fight with katarina cleanup and son is actually really ahead to look at him he's level 15 teddy's tied for highest level on his team when he's only level 13 so definitely a wombo between Cyan ult and Katarina ult could definitely do a lot of damage to them there. So the actually the safest thing, and probably the probably the best option for them was actually just to go for that Mountain Drake, which is definitely going to speed up the Barons in future if they ever want to go for that. So it's not an immediate Baron, but it might lead to a Baron later on. Good alternative to taking the Baron just to go for the low risk option while still getting something valuable. Okay, so Cass's team right now, ooh, gets chunked a bit there, but seem to be ganking the Scion. He actually managed to strongly chunk out the TF, apparently. So he decided to back off there. Fight going on fault lane again. Shen is actually winning somehow. Shen is incredibly ahead, but 
Chen does somehow manage to get ahead there. Doesn't lead to a kill though, but San does have to back off and can't stick around to finish the tower. Ooh, Dragon Swift and engage there. That he managing to do a lot of damage while staying safe that entire time. Doesn't get hit by the Morgana ult. And the Katarina Burst is not enough to break through his HP bar plus ultimate shield when combined with the old magic mantle. I'm guessing she had some cooldowns missing there too. He could have stayed to finish off the Morgana, but he noticed that he had a passive stack from somebody else's CC onto those two people on the river. So he decided to ult onto them instead. He must have seen that it was a good opportunity to clean them up. And his team could just finish off Morgana for him. Ooh, nearly gets the Scion there. That was really close. Yeah, okay, so I'm actually guessing this one Magic Mantle in the end is probably going to be going for Banshee's Veil. He is going AP, so it would make sense. You do get a lot of magic damage from Woodsand as well, though, so. Let's see what he decides to go for. Oh, he actually did go. No, okay, he initially, he built the mod to start, then he refunded that and actually did go for the Banshee's Veil. Interesting, okay. Yeah, fair enough. Um, kind of hard to say which is better between the Wet Sand and Ma and Kaisa, because you actually she she has a really good synergy with Wet Sand because of her naturally high attack speed and her Ginsu's Rage Blade, which amplifies on hit. But at the same time, her AD ratios are really good too. I guess he would just value the Ma more if he's just more interested in staying alive especially as opposed to just doing as much damage as possible but either way the banshees is also good especially so if you're going AP he's officially hit 100 CS over Caitlyn this game, so. Absolute dominance from Teddy here. Oof. Nearly does die to that, though. Where did the Ignite come from? Oh, he got ignited by Katarina, fair enough. Oh, he actually does fall at the end, kinda. Slightly ruins his KDA, feels bad, man. But, shouldn't be long before his team manages to win the game without him anyway. Yep, and that's the game. So that, ladies and gentlemen, was SKT, Teddy. And now you see exactly what happens when Teddy plays in European solo queue. To be fair, I mean, I think this was Master or Grandmaster. It wasn't quite Challenger. Wait, hang on. This is the wrong screen. Uh, whatever. Anyway. Yeah. It's not quite Challenger, ELO, but uh, actually, I think that the Scion definitely is... Challenger average, let me just check what rank that game was. So we can be accurate. No, okay, yeah, there were actually plenty plenty of challengers in that game. Also some grandmasters, some master players, some diamond ones, but yeah. Overall, yeah, pretty much he was challenger. So that's SKT that every SKT Teddy, everybody. So I'm going to end it here. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. And I'll see who else I want to do VOD reviews on. I, I want to take advantage of this European Worlds to do as many as possible on Forum Pros. So keep your eyes peeled for those. Until next time, gamers.